Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we will discuss different types of blood pressure medication and how they function. So in this video, we will discuss why it's important to know how a blood pressure medication functions. And we're gonna go through several different classifications of blood pressure medication. These aren't all of them, but uh, these are the main ones that uh, you should be focusing on. So why is it important to know? Well, why do I even care how a blood pressure medication works if I can't prescribe them? Well, just because you can't prescribe them, you know, assuming you're a nurse, you can administer them. And sometimes you shouldn't be administering them based on uh, what their intended function is. So here is a list of patients' vital signs. Um, these were taken at 930. Uh, blood pressure 153 over 82. Heart rate of 53. Temp 36.8. Respiratory rate 18. And SATs of 96%. So these are the medications that are due at 10 o'clock. So it's important to know which ones, uh, which ones are for um, you know, blood pressure and which ones are not. So this is a diabetes medication, so we don't need that. This is vitamin D, obviously not really relevant to, to, to blood pressure. Uh, Norvasc is a calcium channel blocker. That's going to help lower the blood pressure right here. So this one's okay. Lasix. Lasix is a di diuretic. Um, that's not going to do the patient any harm in this in this instance. But what about metoprolol? Um, metoprolol affects blood pressure as well. Well, metoprolol also has a pretty significant effect on the heart rate. In this in this uh, case, the patient's heart rate is 53. They're rather uh, uh, on the slow side or or, or bradycardic, as uh, we refer to. So it would be a good idea to hold this medication at this time and notify um, whoever the primary uh, medical physician or, or nurse practitioner is that is uh, responsible for this patient is and this they might want to adjust this they might want to hold it for a day and see how they are tomorrow but uh, in this circumstance um, more than likely they're not going to want the uh, metoprolol given all right let's start with diuretics so diuretics work by helping the body get rid of excess fluid uh, the less fluid that the body has in its arteries and veins, the less pressure that will be exerted on the artery walls. So let's look at a, an analogy like this. If you have a tire and the tire has less air in it, if you take air out of your car tire, let's say, it's going to have less pressure in it. Or, or same as a basketball, for example. If you take half of the air out of a basketball, it's going to be very soft and it's not going to have much pressure. Um, so there are several different types of diuretics. Uh, this could be a whole video in itself, but these are the main ones, thiazide diuretics, loop diuretics, potassium sparing diuretics. So common examples include hydrochlorothiazide, spironolactone, and Lasix or uh, furosemide. Beta blockers. So beta blockers work by causing your heart to beat slower and with less force. They do this by blocking the effects of the hormone epinephrine. This is going to be a medication that's going to come up throughout your entire nursing career. So let's look at an analogy like this. So if you drive a race car on a, or if you drive a car on a racetrack and you drive it as fast as you can over and over, the car is going to start falling apart. Your, the tires are going to get worn and the engine's going to end up blowing up. But if you drive a car slow and steady on the road, um, you're going to get much farther with that car. Essentially, slow and steady wins the race, especially if you have an older car, or in these cases, an older heart. Um, some medications in this category include bisoprolol, metoprolol, and atenolol. So obviously, if you have a keen eye, you'll notice a, a trend with beta blockers, and most of them end in OLOL. -O -L. The next category we have are ACE inhibitors. So ACE inhibitors are angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. That's the full name for it. So first we need to know what angiotensin is. And angiotensin causes arteries to constrict. If arteries constrict, they become more narrow. ACE inhibitors inhibit or stop the body from producing angiotensin. So that means the less angiotensin that is being made, the less um, you know, of the angiotensin hormone that's telling the veins to constrict and become more narrow. The more narrow the veins become, or, or the blood vessels become, I should say, the higher the blood pressure is going to be. If you've got more space for the blood, the lower the blood pressure is going to be. And that's kind of repeated here. Um, an analogy for this is um, if you ever take like a plastic water bottle and you 
uh, have it empty and you put the cap on it, you start twisting it. Like that's kind of like angiotensin where um, the water bottle is getting smaller and the volume is getting smaller inside and the pressure is getting higher because the pressure is pushing against uh, the air is pushing against the, uh, the side of the water bottle harder. But um, if you reduce the angiotensin and untwist the water bottle, um, there'll be less uh, pressure on the side of the water bottle. In this case, there'll be less pressure on the side of the veins or uh, blood vessels, I should say. Common uh, examples of medications in this category include lisinopril, peridopril, and ramipril. Obviously, if you have a keen eye, you'll notice another trend. These are the prills, ACE inhibitors. All right, the next one is angiotensin II receptor blockers, also known as ARBs. So we just learned that angiotensin causes blood vessels to become more narrow. Instead of blocking the production of angiotensin itself, as ACE inhibitors do, ARBs actually block the receptors that angiotensin binds to. So uh, angiotensin is still being made, but it's basically got nowhere to go. It's just a different way of, of controlling somebody's blood pressure. Angiotensin has nowhere to bind. It cannot constrict the blood vessels. Uh, common examples in this category include candesartan, telemesartan, valsartan, erbesartan. Um, again, keen eyes will notice that these are called the sartans. So calcium channel blockers. Um, there are two ways calcium channel blockers work. So basically your arteries have calcium channels. Um, when calcium goes through these channels, your arteries constrict. Blocking these channels prevents calcium from constricting the arteries, therefore lowering the blood pressure. Again, we can make an entire video just on calcium channel blockers, but this is the essentially, uh, this is basically the gist of how they work. They also have a secondary function where you have uh, SA and AV nodes in your heart, and these also have calcium channels. When uh, these channels are blocked um, and less calcium gets through, um, it essentially helps your heart beat with less force. The less force your, your um, heart beats with, the lower the blood pressure. Um, some, uh, some calcium channel blockers also have an, uh, have an effect um, on lowering your heart rate, but primarily um, they're responsible for uh, these two functions up here. Uh, definitely the most common example of a calcium channel blocker that you're going to see throughout your career is Norvasc. Um, everybody's on Norvasc. And this is another one right here, nifedipine. So vasodilators. Until this point, we've been working on, uh, we've been uh, looking at medications that mostly um, have worked on the walls of the blood vessels um, by preventing additional constriction or unnecessary constriction of the blood vessels. What vasodilators do is they actually do the opposite. They encourage the muscles in the walls of your blood, blood vessels to actually relax. The more relaxed they are, the more space the blood has, therefore the lower the blood pressure is. Um, one of the common medications in this uh, uh, category is hydralazine hydrochloride, most commonly known as apresoline. So those were the, uh, the most common uh, blood pressure medication categories. Um, again, we could go super in depth on every single one of these categories and have a one hour video um, on every single one, but um, it's better to know 100% of the basic concepts rather than 10% of an advanced concept. Um, there are more types of blood pressure medications, uh, but those were the main ones that we discussed. It's important to know um, what you're giving because sometimes you can give a medication that can actually cause harm to a patient. Um, please subscribe. If you've got any uh, suggestions for future videos, comment them down below. Thank you.